two. Over the course of Cable Raider coming out, uh, we were working on kit ops, and so it became immediately apparent of the value that these tools could have working together. So I want to show that as well. We'll just take this one and hide it. It's not needed. And for this one, we'll just delete vertices on the bottom face because we don't need that either. And since this shape's gonna be basically the main parent, I actually am a big fan of pressing I and then choosing to poke in order to create a very interesting type of wire main object. It's just something I've done um, always. In fact, let me try that again. I meant to shade it as wire, not activate wireframe. But now that we have this object here, we can actually select everything and then um, control P <clears throat> and choose to parent this to the object. And we of course want to set the origin to geometry on this. So now this is our piece. If I press Alt R, we can put this in the center of our scene and we're basically good to go. So one of the benefits of KitOps 2 is the recursive parenting. So inside of our new demo folder, which will be where I'll be creating my inserts until I rename this folder, we'll choose to create insert, which will basically create an insert. And for this one, it's not a cutter, it's actually a wire. So we'll change it to wire so it doesn't show up in the rendering. And if we look at this, this is basically what we're looking at at this moment. So we'll just choose to save this insert. We'll call this uh, cable set one and we have saved this. So now it comes down to how will we get our thumbnail together? So when it comes to the thumbnail, I like to just rotate these until it fits and then eventually grab the camera and raise both of them up in the air until it starts looking a little unrealistic. And then of course, scale things to fit exactly as I need. For this, I'm going to actually shift G and select the same type so that way I can just add a blank material of similarity to it. And with these, they already have a material assigned, it looks like, in the factory system. So we can just replace it using blank material scroll in hard ops if we need to. So let's jump it over to look dev. This is what we're looking at. So the factory object material is just a little bit high for my taste. Uh, I pretty much am sure all we have to do is just lower it down to black, maybe get the roughness to be a little bit less and we're pretty much good to go. And if we jump over to the final render that we're looking at, we see that we probably wanna work on our angle for what this thumbnail is gonna look like, just because it's gonna be show up on, showing up in our library looking like this. So I'll select the hose and we will shift click material scroll, which will basically replace the nodes with random iterations of materials. And we'll just keep scrolling until we find something that's flattering to us to look at later. And I see that most of these are a little bit on the shiny side. I'll be checking into that, of course, but we'll just click to apply. And it looks like we are good to go. We'll just render our thumbnail and wait for it, of course, because we're using cycles and then close our render scene and we're back to where we started. However, we want to jump over to solid mode and utilizing power save, we've already saved this. So we'll just control S and not resave it with power save because it'll make an incremental save. But just to show this insert in action, we'll look at this in side view and utilizing box cutter, we're just going to cut out parts of the inside. Whenever it comes to box cutter, I have perma snap on for ingon, which is basically right here under the snapping. This will make it where you don't have to hold control in order to snap to a fine angle, allowing me to just very quickly cut this sort of shape into a cube. So we look at this like we are, and if we press N and bring up the KitOps panel, we can go over to our new demo and grab cable set and add our insert and we are done. And just like that, we have brought both of these tools together to very quickly populate the top roof of this with cables. And that's really all there is to it. So hopefully there's something that you're able to take away from this that you know, utilizing these tools together, you can bring about untold amounts of power and workflow enhancement by just utilizing them together to, you know, hold these things, these sets, these things that you enjoy reusing that you don't want to spend time remaking and putting them together to create something, you know, very detailed. But with that, we'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time. So in case it's not obvious with 
box cutter, you can extract anything. And with kit ops, you can basically reuse anything. And so even this little slice of a corridor that like I can reuse, and there's a myriad of ways to reuse it, ranging from using it as a collection, reusing it with power link, or, you know, I'm going to actually um, shift click to do a clone smart apply, and then I'm going to control C, and copy that for later, and then delete it right now. So basically I've clone duplicated it, copied it, and we're just gonna talk about that later. So what I'm gonna do is while I'm in box cutter, we're just gonna switch over to box mode. We're just gonna draw a box around this. Nothing fancy, Y, make a box. And now we can jump over to our cutters collection, which is now collection three. And if we enable our extraction, our extraction looks somewhat generic. You know, when you look at it as an extraction, it's like there's nothing to it. But we're gonna go ahead and create an insert from this and mark it as a cutter. And we see that, you know, we probably wanna lower it down a little bit because of how our cutters are. Maybe even make it a little bit bigger and then apply everything through control A and we'll apply all transforms. And we'll just save this as core cut one. And we'll just save that insert and that's it. So, you know, when it comes to rendering the thumbnail, we could render the thumbnail that we were thinking about, but I'm just not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to control V the corridor that we made earlier and bring it in to the scene from the clipboard. So sometimes creatively using um, smart apply is like a time control uh, tool for things like this is also a interesting concept. So we'll just choose origin to geometry or origin to selection actually, which will then allow me to scale this down the way that I want to see it. So we just want to look at just a little bit of it. You know, I don't want to get too crazy with our camera, but we maybe want to put a bevel on it because we're going to be looking at it close up and I probably want to hit it with a blank material just so I don't look at it looking as bland as possible. And if we look at this, this is basically what our thumbnail is going to be. So I'm just going to render a thumbnail. At this point, I don't even bother with the name or the author because it's already dealt with uh, other ways. But if we just control in and make a new scene and we were to just set up our scene that we just had, assuming our Q was as sharpened, of course. If we were to set up our scene again, we would just go under here and just find our core cut, which has a very nice kind of ambiguous looking thumbnail. And we want to turn off auto scale. Auto scale, I just don't know. I'm pretty sure we were supposed to remove that on this particular update, but now we've basically inserted our corridor. We've adjusted our smoothing and now we're just grabbing our cable. So you know, compared to the process that it took to get here of us just now replicating that same thing that I just demonstrated, you know, showing the new concepts of KitOps 2 along with the functionality of utilizing it along with, you know, other tools at your disposal. Just like that, we were able to very quickly create this, you know, little very narrow corridor slice. And, you know, if we wanted to get even more in depth with this, right, we could, you know, shift select the main shape with everything selected and then under manage, we have the option unify, which is under left mouse click. That will actually unify everything to the same collection. So if we look at collection one, this is what it is. And if we look at collection two, we see that unify doesn't take curves that are not wire shaded. So, you know, that's something I'll be checking in to afterwards, but you know, we'll just shift G type and we will press M and move it to our main collection so that everything is where it's supposed to be. So now we have this collection that, you know, I'm just gonna call core cut. And if we make a new collection, you know, outside of the collection, not inside, we'll just go to collection one. And if we shift a insert core cut, we now can just bring this along and duplicate it because it's just cubes. So everything's just going to snap very easily. So we'll duplicate it to the other side and bring it down. And just like that, we've created this very cable-y myriad hose chamber that you know will be very daunting to walk through. But it's just like that, that I just wanted to show some of the concepts of getting started with KitOps and having some fun with it in Cable Raider. Now I'll wrap up this video.